I know that talking about ethics, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton in the same sentence might appear to be uh, a bit of a, a, a contradiction, but there is, when you look at what they're saying about foreign policy and American involvement in the world, there is clearly an ethical choice, and it's different sets of ethics. So uh, Hillary Clinton is an heir to a long-standing bipartisan U.S. tradition that says America has obligations both to itself but to the world. Uh, we have an obligation uh, to maintain a system uh, even if we don't see immediate benefits from it because the long term we benefit from it. There's also a bit of future orientation to it. It is an ethics that is oriented to the present and towards future generations. If you look at the things that Donald Trump has said about foreign policy, it is very much uh, there are citizens and then there's everyone else. And the job of a foreign policy is to benefit the citizens of a country. If you're going to do something for another country, there should be a quid pro quo. So when he's talked about alliances, it's all right, well, we'll protect you. What are you doing for us? If it's a trade deal, well, we'll give you access to our markets. What are you doing for us? And it is very much a balance sheet. It's a 19th century vision. It's one reason perhaps why he and Putin, Vladimir Putin, get along so well. They're both 19th century. Uh, they have 19th century views of, of the international system. It's also one that is very much rooted towards the present. It's not so that, for example, we saw this debate about West Virginia miners, and you know, Donald Trump went in and said, look, I don't care if Bangladesh sinks into the sea 50 years from now. My obligation is to put West Virginia miners today at work. That's who I owe my obligation to. I don't owe it to future generations. I don't owe it to non-Americans unless those non-Americans are doing something for me or for the country. It's a different ethical vision. It definitely seems to have resonance uh, among a number of swaths of the country. I don't think it was a slip for Donald Trump yesterday to say, uh, to the victors go the spoils. And because a lot of Americans said that after the Gulf War and after the Iraq War, well, we expended all this blood and treasure. Why don't we get the oil? Why isn't Kuwait selling oil after 1991 to America for 20 years at $10 a barrel out of gratitude for liberation? <coughs> It's, a, again, a 19th century view of international politics, uh, but it is a view, and it has coherence. And when we're talking about a liberal order that is forward-looking, and we talk about it being for the 21st century, and this is Frank Fukuyama's issue of, you know, kind of didn't say, well, what happens if the 19th century came calling and wanted, we wanted to go back to it? Uh, and when we look around the world, China, Russia, a lot of countries look at the 19th century order and say, what was wrong with it? Why can't we go back to it? Uh, not necessarily a liberal order, not necessarily an integrative order, but one that has coherence, one that has its own ethical standards and visions for how to operate policy. Uh, the Brits, 52%, said we're turning our back on the European project. Uh, this is a 21st century vision. We like 19th century splendid isolationism. We'll see what Theresa May does with it. Americans, I think, have a similar uh, choice, and we are, in some ways, for the first time since, and why raised 1952, that was the last gasp of returning us to our pre-war isolationism, uh, turning our back, NATO, Cold War, no, let's go back. Uh, we have that choice in 2016. Uh, do we stick with this order that we have created, sustained, godfathered, uh, or are Americans going to say, we're done with it, someone else can pay for it, uh, and we're, we're not going to do it anymore, and if someone else doesn't pay for it, so what? So we do have, I think, a fundamental choice. No matter who wins the election, though, I think that these are going to be themes that are going to continue. They're not going to disappear. We're going to see them continue, I think, for the foreseeable future in the U.S., in Britain, Germany is now ra wrestling with it. The French elections next year will be another test of, of this. Uh, we'll see what happens in Poland and Hungary, uh, and we'll see what happens in other parts of the world.